Welcome back. This is part two of the X-Gen Grass and Dynamic Ball series. If you haven't seen part one of the video, check it out. That's where we discuss how to make X-Gen Grass. You can click on the video here if you want to redirect to it. Otherwise, in this video, we're going to learn how to add end hair dynamics to our grass. We will also explore a common glitch that trips up many first-time X-Gen users. We'll learn what the glitch is and we'll learn exactly how to fix it, diving into the X-Gen folder structure and really understanding what's going on in there. This is definitely something every X-Gen user should watch. So make sure to watch through the video to see that example. Also, stick to the end of the video to see how we can incorporate some wind dynamics to our grass. Let's dive into the tutorial. If you closed out Maya and you're opening Maya again to work on your project for the first time, make sure that you set your project before opening your file. XGen is very picky and this helps Maya know where to save your XGen files. Once you've done this, open your Maya grass file from last time. So this is where we left off. Let's go to the Modify tab. Here is where we have to add our Anim Wire modifier. This modifier is how we tell XGen where to put our dynamic curves for hair. The first thing we need to do is build a map where these curves will be generated from. Just click Create Maps. The first thing I like to do is make sure that these folders are pointing to the right direction by clicking on the folder and reading the file path. Next, if we just click Generate, we see all these little yellow lines appear. These are our guides where the hair curves are going to generate. If you go up to Density, adjust this number and click Generate again, then you see more of these yellow curves get generated. You see that your mouse also changed. If we clear this out and just focus on our mouse, wherever we click, a yellow line will appear. So you have the option of using the density to create your curves randomly, or you can manually place in your curves, or you can add expressions. For this, we're going to use the density and also a map to tell it exactly where we want more curves versus less curves. To do that, we have to start thinking about our scene. We know that we have this patch of grass and we have a ball that we're gonna drop in the center of the grass. So we probably need more detail in the center of the grass than we do on the outer edges of this patch. To do this, we need to paint a map. Here under mask, select the little arrow and click create map. While I create my maps, I like to look at my Windows Explorer browser to make sure that my XGen paths are actually being created. Every time you paint, you have to select this little floppy disk save icon in order to ensure that you save your map and you can generate curves from it. When I first start painting, hit the save button and just go to my Windows to see if it actually created the ptex file. As you can see in mine, it didn't create the ptex file. It's because I was practicing and painting earlier, deleted all my files, and try to do this again. There are many reasons why this may not work, but no worries, there is a solution. So as you see here that when we first created this mask, it automatically created a file path. This file path is probably not hooked up right. So let's manually adjust this file path. Click on the little folder icon, and once you click it, just search for your paint maps folder. I like to put my maps inside their own subfolder, but it's not a mandatory thing that you have to do. So now that I'm pointing to a folder that I like, I'm going to go back to Maya, hit the save icon, go back to my window, and now we can see that my ptex map has actually been saved in the proper place. So let's say that I like the density of 3 for the inner circle, where the ball is going to interact with the grass, but I want less curves for the outside. I like to start with experimenting on the lower number first, so I will pick a flood color of 0.5. So putting 0.5 as the color means that it's 50% of my density. So in this case will be 1.5. Now I'll paint my inner circle white, which will be 100% of my density, so three. And I'm going to paint it using the Gaussian blur brush to give it some gradient. Now, if I hit generate, nothing happens because I didn't click save. So first click save and then generate. Now, before closing this window, there's two things you have to do to save this file. First, click save and second, click Create at the bottom. If you do not do this, it will unlink the map, and next time you open this window, it will be the default. If we click on Preview Wires button at the bottom, we see the placement of where our wires are. Next, we have to create our hair system. When you click the button, all of these curves are created, and both the curves and the plane are selected. Do not unselect this. You need to have this selected before clicking Make Curves Dynamic. All of the settings here are exactly what we want. So we can just click Make Curves Dynamic. Depending on your computer specs, this can take a few minutes. Once it's done, we just click Attach Hair System. Once we do, again, I like to look at my paths. 
I have this new folder called Atom Wires, and inside I have my Control, Curves, and Points folder, which means everything is working just fine. Now, if I hit play, you see that all the grass blades are moving in the same direction as the white curves. Each of these curves are causing motion to all the grass blades closest to it, and the blades in between curves are average or interpolating the motion in between. Now, these curves are bending a little bit too much and going through the ground. There are a number of ways to fix this. First, let's look at this N rigid one that was created. If we go to the node editor, we see that it is connected to the plane. This is what making the plane a rigid body and tells N hair to collide with it. As we see, it's not working 100%, and let's take a look at some ways to fix it. First, we wanna look at the thickness. We can do this by changing this setting here to collision thickness. We immediately see that this is a little bit too thick and actually goes through our blades of grass when they're curved down. So let's change this to something like 0.01. That looks much better already. Next, we want to change the hair system settings because our hair is bending way too much. To do that, we need to understand these curves a little bit better. So this curve right here, you can see in the outliner, is an output curve. This is the curve that is bending and causing the grass to bend. The other curve is our default initial shape or rest shape curve or start curve. These are all synonyms. This is what the output curve looks like in the first frame. The follicles are these little red dots at the base that tell the curve where to grow from. Let's click on our hair system and go under dynamic properties and adjust the start curve attract. This will cause the output curve to be more attracted to the start curve. I'm going to start by putting this at 0.9. You can think of it as 90% attraction to the curve and 10% dynamic. It will still collide with any objects like our ball later on, but this percentage will affect it mostly when it's not interacting. So if we hit play, now we see that our output curve sways back and forth trying to keep as close as possible to the start curve as it settles. It settles around frame 120, 150. So that's going to be my pre-roll. I will simulate an extra 150 frames that will never be rendered in the final product. Now, as I said in the beginning of this video, let's add a bit of wind dynamics to this grass. If we go to the nucleus node, we see a couple of important attributes. We're just going to focus on the wind attributes at this time. Here, you can control the speed, the direction, and the wind noise. Let's increase the speed to 10 and see what we get. It's only moving a little bit, so let's crank it up to 100 and see what we get. There we go, we have a lot of motion in the grass now, but it's all going in the same direction. If we wanted to vary this, we can just increase the wind noise. You can play with these settings and change the direction of the wind into a little bit of percentage in each direction if you would like. Play around with the settings to see what looks good to you. So there you have it, end dynamics for your X-Gen grass. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and make sure to subscribe to get notified when part 3 is released. In part 3, we will create our water balloon and add end cloth dynamics to it. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. We'd love to hear from you and let us know what kind of videos you wanna see next.